At the 48th Phyllis Schlafly Eagle Council, we sat down with Tammy Nichols, a Republican in the Idaho House of Representatives. Tammy Nichols, wonderful to have you on American Thought Leaders. Thank you, appreciate it. So Tammy, parental rights, this is a kind of a centerpiece key issue for you. Yeah. You're a state legislature, you're in the House in Idaho. Correct. Um, What's going on with parental rights in Idaho? Well, so we're seeing issues with parental rights all over the nation right now. Um, Idaho is known to be a pretty conservative state still, uh, but we're seeing things creep into our state as well. So, um, especially with uh, education and medical decisions. Uh, right now we have uh, in education common core that was put in we call it the Idaho core standards uh, but they are in essence common core and it's really taken a lot of the parents ability to be able to help with the education of their children away and they're not being informed on a lot of things we have sex ed that's trying to come into our state in fact in the legislature a couple years ago they actually did try to pass a bill or make changes to the law where it basically removed parents from being able to educate their children on sex ed and turn that over for the the state to be able to do instead. Um, thankfully that was defeated, it didn't pass, but it took a lot of grassroots efforts to be able to do it. Uh, the more uh, recent issue, uh, which we just saw in California, but it has also crept into my state a little bit, is on vaccinations. Okay. So California just passed a law where even if your child has had a medical side effect to a vaccination, that there's no exemption for you to be able to utilize. In Idaho, we are seeing where they're taking specific vaccinations, vaccinations that really haven't had a lot of history or a lot of testing done on them, and they're trying to mandate them, like Jenica Cockle uh, vaccination okay. is one of them. And um, in Idaho, it's interesting because we actually have an exemption for Idaho, and it can be religious or just because you don't want to vaccinate your children. Right. And that is law in Idaho. But what we're seeing happening is that they don't want to notify parents that there is this option that they have available. So the schools will send home forms saying that your child needs to be vaccinated, they need to be updated on their shots, and they'll give you the list of everything that needs that's required, and they'll leave out that part of it that you still do have an exemption that you don't have to have your child vaccinated for whatever shot they're trying to tell you because it is a law. Um, parents just need to give a brief explanation and send it in and that's supposed to cover it. But they don't want to be transparent for some reason and let parents know that that's an option. Well, that's very interesting. So you're seeing a number of types of laws that are really restricting parental rights in other places and you're trying to kind of stave that off for Idaho. Exactly. And like I said, in other states we're seeing it happen a lot, even down to uh, sex change operations or abortion, not informing parents. And so yeah, we're seeing that restriction occurring against parental rights in a lot of states, so we're trying to be proactive and keep that out of Idaho. So what, you mentioned a few, but what are some of the more disturbing laws that you've seen that, that really create this, this problem? Well, more recently, I mean, you Google anything that has to do with parental rights and there's actually a lot of stories that come up, but there was one in particular, I don't remember exactly which state it was in, but where a young child, the mother said that this child wasn't the sex it was born with and they wanted to change that. The father, on the other hand, did not, and so it went into a court case. They actually ruled against the father and said that by him not allowing the child to go through transitioning that it was going to cause the child um, mental harm and abuse right. and so they denied the father the ability to keep his child the sex that it, the child was born with. Very, no that's interesting but but the mother was for this so. The mother was for it, yep. So, so we're seeing that happening and um, there's also been cases where the schools have stepped in, a child will say they're transgender, that they want to switch their, their sex. Sure. The um, school will actually initiate that for them, start giving the hormone therapy, not even letting the parents know what's going wow. on. So that's taken place in a few states. Um, we're seeing, uh, like I said, the sex ed coming in. And so uh, what's interesting with that is schools will adopt a sex ed curriculum and they'll present it to the public if it's required. That, you know, this is the curriculum that we've chosen. But And so parents think that that's what their child's going to be taught. But what's happening is that the schools are then reaching to outside organizations such as Planned Parenthood to come in and teach the subjects but it's not the curriculum that they're using or saying that they adopted because it's an outside entity that they're bringing in with their own curriculum, their own resources that they're bringing into the schools and parents have no idea that that's going on. So, and how is the curriculum that's promised different from the curriculum that's affected? 
Like in um, because they there's no control over it. So the like Planned Parenthood can just bring in whatever they want to teach and bring that in into the school. And the school board already approved the curriculum that's supposed to be used. Well, they don't use it at all, or they'll use just little bits of it. But that's what parents are thinking that their children are being taught when that's not what's happening at all. But, it, but it's actually a, a, a completely different, different message. Yeah, a whole different curriculum, whole different program. Parents are under the impression that this, you you know, that we're teaching kids this, this, and this. And if this, this, and this is not being taught and it's being taught, there's something else being taught, parents should know and have that option to be able to say, yes, I want my child to learn this or no. In Idaho, we actually tried to work on last session a opt-in to sex ed instead of an opt-out. It's required that they have this program be taught right. to them, but um, we wanted to give parents the option to where they could actually just opt their kids in instead of having to try to opt them out. And we see California, some of the bigger states, where they're not even allowing the option for parents to be able to choose um, if their kids participate in certain programs or not. They're mandating it. But, and that's a whole other issue because you shouldn't be mandating any type of curriculum or program into the schools. They should be an optional program or, or an optional ability. Because once you make them law, then that's exactly what you're supposed to be teaching. And if that changes down the road, then if you're not teaching it, you're breaking the law in essence. So. No, that's that's interesting. But surely, you know, in general, there's a curriculum that's agreed upon that right. that right. you know roughly. Uh, students need to learn, sure. right? In my school district, the way it's supposed to work is if there's a program that's going to be adopted or a new curriculum, then it's supposed to be placed out there for the public to be able to view and to review and to okay. give information and input on it. it. And they're sidestepping that process in many, many ways and going through backdoor approaches, um, almost circumventing the legislature or the local school boards and going straight into um, the State Department of Ed or into the schools themselves and placing these programs and without any input or or public opinion. So, so and is this driven be, for, I, ideologically because people want a certain curriculum and they don't think that the parents would agree or what, why, why would they do this? Yeah, usually it's because the program that they're wanting to bring in really go against a lot of the values and beliefs um, that most of the parents and most of the public have and so when you're in a district like mine that's very conservative and you're trying to bring in some sort of uh, crazy sex ed program where they're practicing what they're learning, people are not going to go for that overall. They're going to say, no, that's way too much. That should be taught at home. That's not something for the school to be involved in. Um, but there's outside larger organizations that that's what they want to bring into the schools and utilize. People ask me what, how they can get involved, what they can do, and first they need to find out if, so Idaho had just passed a few years ago a parental rights bill, and so we actually codified into law that parents do have rights over their children. Uh, the Supreme Court had always upheld that, but in the last um, 20 years there's been um, decisions that have been made where it's actually limiting parental rights or saying that parents really don't have as many rights as they thought such as when they go to school um, there's been law or there's been um, court ruling saying your parental rights end at that door once they go into the school the school has the rights over the children not the parents so now we're seeing that transition and that ideology change and so parents need to see if they actually have uh, parental rights on on their books in their state and if they don't they might want to look at actually trying to implement that how many states would you say have that law um, I believe where they have uh, a parental rights law, I think it's 15 or less right now. So, yeah, the majority do not. It's funny, things, you know, I, I don't have kids. Things I had, to, I didn't think about. It's almost bizarre to think that you would need to codify that. Exactly, exactly. But that's the society that we live in today. And so, um, you know, it's been told by several educators that are high up that you know they would actually like to see the schools 24 7 where the kids are there and that the parents you know just see them on the weekends and that would basically be it um, but yeah that's really concerning because you know kids are raised best in a home environment um, not with the government so so Tammy you know you've been in office for about a year now yep. um, and I we were talking a little bit about you had a pretty innovative social media based <laughs> campaign where you you know you had a right. five you actually had to defeat four other uh, yes. candidates in the primary uh, to tell us a little bit about your grassroots campaign that got you yeah, into office. Yeah, so I did. I had a five-way race in my primary and in my state the primary pretty much determines the election at that point. You still have a general, um, but in my in my area uh, 
you know, my opponents uh, that I would have, uh, it's a pretty conservative area, so there really wasn't too, too many issues that way. But yeah, I really wanted to um, incorporate my communities and, my, and the people in my district. Um, my uh, desire was to give them a voice back um, so that they actually had real representation. Um, but I wanted to do things a little bit different. So I utilized a lot of social media, and one thing that I did is I went out into the communities and I went to the small businesses and told them that, you know, they didn't have to support me in any way. I was running for office, but I wanted to support them and I wanted to showcase them. Coming from a family that ran businesses, small businesses, that that is the backbone of your communities. And they're involved uh, not only with their business, but they are usually really involved within the community itself. So I would go in and interview these businesses and find out what they did and what um, you know what they did in the communities and then just do a little snapshot picture and then I'd put their contact information and anything else that they wanted and then I would blast that all over social media so that people in my district would see that um, because I thought you know that'll help them and uh, and people will know about them and I'm sure support. they love that that's oh it, it was great I never had anyone tell me no I don't want to participate in that so and yeah and it was very you know very easy um, Again, I, you know, you don't have to support me in any way, shape, or form. But here's, this is what I want to do, and I want to support you. So I utilize that quite a bit. And you went out and you connected yeah. with your constituents. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm just one person. I can't do everything by myself. Um, so I really felt it was important um, to be able to be involved. And my uh, district is very agricultural. That's what I've been working on now is to go out into the agriculture part of it, into that industry, to see how things are working, how things are functioning, what's affecting them, what's working that's well, um, you know, what could be improved. Uh, so that is kind of my issue right now. Hemp is a big issue in my district. They really want to have hemp. Um, my farmers would love that. Uh, so that's been an issue in my state right now, and I'm sure it will be for our next session. We almost passed a hemp bill to be able for the farmers to, to grow hemp, um, but we'll probably bring that back this next session. So. Well, Tammy Nichols, such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.